So now what we would discuss in this section is how to calculate diluted EPS for ESOPs and share warrants. The method that we would be using here, the heading in your notes would be treasury stock method. Treasury stock method. This is, method is used to calculate diluted EPS for ESOPs as well as share warrants. So imagine a scenario like this. Profit after tax is 500,000. Number of common shares which have been issued is 10,000. Now what company also did is it went to its employees and it said that we are issuing 10,000 ESOPs to you. Employee stock option plan. And with this ESOPs you will have a right to buy shares of a company at a cheaper price. So let us say the current market price or closing market price of that stock was 400 and average market price during the year was 300 and exercise price that means the price at which employee can buy the shares from you is 150. So the first thing you would remember in this calculation that closing market price will never be put to use for diluted EPS calculations. It is the most common trap which is put on the exams. We will never use closing market price. We will always use average market price. So on an average, the price of the stock was 300 and exercise price was 150. So employee can buy the share almost at half the price. Now we will divide our discussion into three parts for ESOPs. In the first part, we will look at how this method is presented in the curriculum, which is a four step process. In the second part, we would look at a shortcut to eliminate that four step process. And in the third part, we would look at what is the intuition behind the shortcut. Okay, so let's start with the curriculum process. This part you can write down with me now. Step number one. Step number one. Assume, assume, you don't have to write example, just write steps. Assume, ESOPs are exercised, assume, ESOPs are exercised and shares have been issued. ESOPs are exercised and shares have been issued. Step number two. Assume that money, which is the exercise price, has been received. Step number three. So in step number two, we assume that we have received the money from employees. Step number three. Now company will use this amount. Company will use this amount to buy back shares and because we are buying back it's called as a treasury stock method so company will use this amount to buy back shares from open market from open market at at average market price Company will use this amount to buy back shares from open market at average market price. And step number four. So maybe let me write step number four here. Step number four. Number of shares to be added to denominator to denominator of diluted EPS formula. Number of shares to be added to denominator of diluted EPS formula is equal to shares issued in step 1 shares issued in step 1 minus shares bought back in step 3 shares issued in step 1 minus shares bought back in step 3 
Okay, so let us apply this four step process to this question. So assume ESOPs are exercised and shares have been issued. How many shares will be issued? 10,000. So this was your step number one. Money has been received from the employees. So how much money will they pay? They will pay 150 per share. So how much will we receive? That would be 1.5 million. So we will receive 1.5 million from the employees. Are you following this process? 10,000 shares issued at a discounted price of 150. So we have received 1.5 million. Company will use this amount to buy back shares from the open market. So we have 1.5 million and average market price is 300. So how many shares will we be able to buy back? At 1.5 million with the average market price of 300, how many shares can we buy back? We will be able to buy back 5000 shares. Does that make sense to you? And therefore, the number that we would add to the denominator 10,000 minus 5000, which would be 5000. And therefore, your diluted EPS in this case, 500,000 divided by 10,000 plus the number that we derive using this four step process, which is 5000. And whatever the number is, that's your answer. Okay, so please write down fast. Step four. In the diluted EPS formula, we just have to add this 5000 and we got that from step four. We said in step number one, we've issued 10,000 shares. In step number three, we've bought back 5000 shares. So essentially company shares have increased only by 5000. So we added that to denominator and then we got diluted EPS. So though all the four steps were done so that we can get this number of 5000. Are you fine with this? Now let us see a shortcut so that you do not have to remember any of this four step. This was only for your understanding purpose. After this, you would not really be using these four steps. So number to be added to the denominator of diluted EPS formula. Number to be added to denominator of diluted EPS formula is equal to benefit to the employee divided by average market price multiplied with number of ESOPs benefit to the employee divided by average market price multiplied with number of ESOPs. Let's see if the formula works. The average market price is 300, but employee could buy at what price? 150. So how much was the benefit to him? 150. So 150 as a ratio to 300 into number of ESOPs, which is 10,000. And how much would that be? 5,000. So just by this single step formula, you can get 5,000 and then add that to denominator. Are we fine with this? And the last leg, now we will understand what was the intuition of this formula. So let us say there is a vegetable vendor who happens to be your relative. And therefore compared to others, he is going to sell you those vegetables at a cheaper price. So there are two schemes that he's devised for you. Scheme one and scheme two. In the first scheme, he says that my average market price of selling these vegetables is 25 per kg. Average market price is 25 per kg. But to you, I will sell at a price of 20 per kg which means to you, I will sell this at a discounted price. Now, if you decide to invest or if you decide to buy vegetables worth 100 rupees, then how many kgs will you be able to buy? 
you will be able to buy 5 kgs now see the same scheme but you can put it in a slightly different words now you can say i will sell you 4 kgs at 25 per kg so how much would you invest again 100 but if you buy 4 kgs from me i will give you 1 kg free are both the schemes same so what we are trying to calculate with those four steps or with that formula we are essentially trying to calculate how many shares have actually given by the company free of cost to the employees so what essentially happened is imagine that this is the average market price but the exercise price of your shares is 20 okay and imagine your employees are buying five shares from you how will you apply the formula you will say benefit to the employee how much per kg five divided by average market price how much 25 into number of isops issued how many kgs five how much would you get you would get one so what you're trying to do is you're trying to find out how many shares has company issued in a way free of cost to the employees and that number you're adding to the denominator of diluted eps formula is that fine so please write down quickly so in the context of uh, previous example done writing this there were 10,000 ESOPs average market price was 300 but the exercise price generally denoted by capital X was how much 150 okay now how much amount did company receive when the ESOPs were exercised they received 1.5 million but how many shares did they actually issue 10,000 had they issued the shares at market price market price was how much 300 so if the company had issued market shares is shares at market price at 300 and they had received total of 1.5 million they would have issued how many shares 5,000 shares because when you issue 5,000 shares at 300 per share you would receive 1.5 million but those remaining 5,000 shares company in a way gave free to the employees and that is the number that we added to the denominator of diluted EPS formula is that fine here? Yeah?